All right, let's just jump right in. We have a new feature, lists to create custom lists. Uh, lists can be used to uh, affect the workflow in a variety of ways uh, where you can use the list to trigger field pop populate, populating fields with information from the list. You can trigger workflow jumps, um, auto canceling and more. Uh, so where are lists at? Lists are in the admin panel under the process section. You'll find it here. Uh, if you want to create a new list, simply click on the plus button, but we're not going to go through that. I'm just going to show you when I create it here. So um, simply here we have, you can add a column. By simply add column, you can name it however you want. You can set it mandatory or you can set it unique. Unique is always going to be mandatory, uh, but you don't need to have them both checked. Uh, if you want to add a new row, you simply add a new row. Uh, for now, it's going to be manual. Um, but we do plan on later having other features where you can import uh, lists directly into the system uh, and whatnot. And later I'll explain something else. Uh, so let's just go, go over some use cases here. I have a site list here for my Project Blue and I have a device list here for my Project Blue. Uh, my device list simply has unique serial number, device type, model, host name, and asset tag. And my site list simply has the site ID, the street, the city, zip code, country code, and country. So let's see this in action here. So I have three use cases. One use case, I'm gonna use a site list where I'm gonna choose from a site list or from a site ID. And uh, it's gonna, I'm just gonna choose a site ID and it's gonna populate the field with the information. Uh, just a little information for you. Uh, for this to work, I created a custom field site ID where I have my two options available. In the future, we already have it in our, uh, plans to allow forms to access the site list so you don't have to create a special site ID and fill in all the site uh, IDs manually. Uh, we will have a feature in the future where forms will be able to display the unique field from a, from a list. It doesn't necessarily have to be a site list, could be a device list, a site list, whatever kind of list you have. All right, so let's see the first one in action. So first one is just choosing a site ID And it's going to populate the field, the address field, according to the site list found. So we have all our information. All I chose was a site ID, 194. So here you see 194, all I did was choose a site ID and it pre-filled the location from the site list found in the admin pen. And you'll see here, I have my site ID chosen. Here's one, set address selection, site ID. So that's one use case. The second use case is gonna to be to automatically cancel a ticket based off of a wrong, well, let's say unfound serial number, not wrong serial number, but an unfound one. So what we had before, we had the device list, we had serial number for laptop, one, two, three, four, five, and serial number five, four, three, two, one for printer. So what happens? I created, I had my workflow adjusted to check the device list. If this device list doesn't have a serial number to automatically cancel the ticket, it will push it through. It'll push the whole ticket through, which is what we want um, because we want to preserve that serial number for future cases. If the customer asks, why did you take my ticket? Uh, we have a record of it. All right, we'll still stick with sanity. I'll choose sanity too. Now here I have a serial number. I'm gonna put in a random serial number. It's gonna save it for future reference as well. But it's gonna automatically cancel the ticket. You see it's cancel, status is already uncanceled. We have the, the, the ID they chose here. It's saved in here and in the history, since I had a custom workflow, I had a step cancel, auto cancel, and explains cancel because the selected device is not supported. So what happened when they created the ticket, it reached out to the device list, didn't find the serial number existing. Since it didn't find it, it automatically canceled, uh, the workflow automatically canceled the ticket and sent it to the cancel status. All right, and the third one is to jump to a different status. So for laptops, for my use case here, I have 
if it's a laptop, jump to the validation status, which my validation status is gonna be before my appointment status. So we'll open one more ticket. And then we will, this is my serial number for a laptop. So laptop goes to st uh, status validation, printers go straight to appointment. So in this case, what's gonna happen is it's gonna jump to the validation or the validate status here. So you see here, I have a new status validation. I have a new entry here in my history log. Validation laptop, laptop devices have to be validated. So I also use a set of D sort of pre-populated the field here. I also use an, a, an active serial number. So it pre-populated all the device information here as well. Added a new entry uh, log history entry here based off the step. I just have three buttons in my validation step here. Once it's validated, it moves then to the regular workflow at appointment so on and so forth. So those are just really three simple use cases you can use uh, for lists. I'm sure you'll figure out a lot more ways you can manipulate and, and work and affect the workflow in many ways based off of lists. So we look forward to supporting you in the future with all your lists. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's move on to the next one. Create ticket info types. So you can now create customized ticket info types. Ticket infos are here in this create different types here. We have our standard ones here, we now allow you to create a custom one. And in order to create a custom one, you wanna make your way to the value sets page where we now include a ticket info type. So simply create new ticket info. Whatever ticket info type you want. Actually, let's do that. So I'm going to create a new ticket info type customer feedback. So now I have customer feedback here. That's a fresh page. And now I have here customer feedback where I can use to input some feedback here. Now this works exactly the same as an internal info. So there's no acknowledgement needed. Uh, the idea is that you can just create your own ticket info types to use as you need. It leaves a unique um, ticket info type here. So customer feedback, so you can quickly see which ticket info type is needed. You may have many different needs for a different type of feedback. So have fun, create all the ticket info types you need uh, to work with your projects. All right, share attachments via cooperation partners. Just a little jump back cooperation partners or partners you work with <clears throat> directly. We have here, uh, you could, we added skills, you could send them skills. There was no way that you could share attachments. So if you had attachments, you send a ticket to them, it wasn't copying it over. We now allow you to do that. We have several options to choose from um, to send attachments or to, if you don't want to send any attachments. Uh, so basically you send attachments to cooperation, you can receive attachments to cooperation receive sign off only, receive and send attachments both ways, or send all and receive only sign off attachments from your cooperation partner or none. Uh, so we'll just pick the easy one for now. And just to see this in action, we will just double check that. Yeah, okay. Let's see what happens. So we're going to send an attachment. So we have an attachment here. We're going to send this to our cooperation partner. So this is 191. And this is the attachment I sent. And if he's, he finishes up his ticket uh, and has more attachments here and he sends it back to me, and as I have the option to send and receive all attachments, I'll receive everything that they attach to the ticket back when, when I receive it back from them. All right, good. 
Uh, we have new alias types to be used throughout the admin panel. Pretty much everywhere there's a filter or drop down, we have a new uh, customer LSTT field to use. So if you want to start using the customer LSTT field, we have it available um, for monitoring fields, for filtering fields, ticket scoring, uh, pretty much everywhere there is a drop down or aliases to be used. We now have customer LTT available to use for your filtering and monitoring needs. All right, another one, <clears throat> delete mandatory fields. So for forms before it was not possible to delete mandatory fields um, as needed. For example, we have this one field here we added a while ago where you could add inf inf a ticket info type and a message. And it was not possible to delete that once you added it and saved the page, it was not possible to get rid of it. Um, this is just one use case. Obviously for some of these, you may not want to delete it, but you can. We, we don't restrict you on deleting anything, but a good use case is if you add a field that's mandatory, you saved it and, oh, now you saved it, you can't remove the mandatory field. You're now in luck. We will now allow you to delete you, but we will warn you that it may cause negative effects on the form if it's one of those more mandatory ones like last name or country or something. Um, but we still have to throw the warning up. So this, you can simply remove any mandatory fields you don't need to mourn your forms. So you don't have to recreate your form and activate that one. No need to messy up the forms page. Setting defaults. So let's go back to our form here. Before we had settings here, we had a default setting here and there was just some confusion. There were some issues with um, custom fields that had their default set. And then when you wanted to set the default in the form itself, it was causing issues. So we fixed that by um, regrouping them all together. So the visibility and the defaults now all together in one simple page. And you know, just an example here. Um, so we have now have a little drop down here that you can show all. If you have all of them checked, you can just unshow them or show them all here. You can select a default here. This default set here will overwrite the custom field default set. So for if I had a premium, this is a custom field. If I had set this to default in my custom field page, this would be marked with default. But if I then set break fix for this form, uh, the default, regardless of what the default is on the custom field, the default on the form is gonna trump the uh, default from the custom field. So with this here, we have default here and the visibility here. I'm just gonna simply save that and everything's much done much easier. All right, we have improved analytics. I don't have a lot of information here, so I'll just show you the new page. So basically we added FMA user details to the Workforce Insights Report under the Roles tab. So now you can simply go to the Roles tab, click on this little box down here to show only app users. And with this, you will see in an instant, all the users and which platform they're using, which version they have updated. Last time they synced. Um, here you can drill down even further to separate these so maybe you have five users that don't have the uh, the most current app version, but you don't want to look through the whole big list. You can simply drill down here, adjust your data, and get all the users that you need to get. This is a great feature. I love it. You can quickly see it at, at, a, at a glance who is working on what app. Okay, some little smaller ones, but still important. History is now translated. So if you translate your page now before, uh, if you choose a different language, uh, the history wasn't translated. This is now translated. Uh, the line here and the text underneath is all translated. If it's translated, if it's written in English, it's in English. You're not going to translate that. But all the standard stuff that we have in our system will be translatable to the language selected. And another small one, I think it was the last release. So the release before we introduced interface forms. And if you are non-enterprise, uh, you could still use it. At this time though, if you're a free user, you'll not have access to the interface form. You have to be enterprise only. So if you wanna become enterprise or if you wanna use interface forms, you have to become an enterprise customer. All right, some nice improvements. We did some UX and UI improvements for the date picker and switches. So you'll notice on, on Workplace now, we have a new modernized calendar. Looks much nicer. Um, a good example is the
is the uh, um, these tickets here. We can select a multi-day. This looks just much nicer, much more modern um, looking calendar. And this is applied to our workplace. We will get admin panel in the near future, but for now, workplace has been updated with all the new calendars, and date pickers, date and time pickers. And we've also unified all the switches throughout the admin panel and the workplace. So now <clears throat> all switches are going to have this nice green because there was mixed up, there was black, and then there was the white and then the, the green. So now we unified them all. So all switches will have the nice green tone to it. All right, another small one here, if I can remember how to get there. So we have this report form. <clears throat> So we just cleaned up some of the code here when you're looking at validations. Um, so now we have the work, we have the chip here rather than the, the coded path uh, here. If we have a chip for it, if a chip exists in the system, we'll show the chip instead of the, the coded path to make it easier for you. Uh, another thing with forms, checklists are now available to use on all form types, however, to use a checklist on a form and have it work, you'll need to have an active intervention report. If there's no active intervention report, let's say in here, this type, if I had to edit form here with a checklist in it, I could use it because I have a, a, a intervention report here. But if I didn't have one uh, and I put a checklist in my create ticket form, it will not work because it's not, it doesn't have an active report form. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're using your checklists or adding your checklist custom fields to forms, be aware that you'll need to have an active report form to use that form. We have improved searching, validations, and let me go to one here. We have improved the search so that now we're actually trying to search different things. Before the search was kind of um, messing around a little bit sometimes, but we've improved it to where it's actually going to look. Before it was using just the first letter, and after that, it just wasn't working very well. But we've improved it now, so you can actually type. It's going to search every letter. So TES, for instance, there's TES here. Test notes. So uh, the search has been improved. So no longer you're going to have to guess game here and try to find it or dig through the big drop down. The search is much better now, so please use it. All right, some FMA stuff. Um, we have improved the GPS locations. Last release, we introduced GPS locations where you could simply put in a latitude, longitude for an address uh, rather than a physical address. Uh, and we display it here in, in the workplace. We now have included that into the FMA. Uh, so now on the, F, on the appointment card, it shows a nice little GPS icon rather than the address. And we renamed the address to location to incorporate all the different types of locations. There could be, it could be a latitude longitude location or an actual physical address location, or what have you. So for Android and iOS, we have now included that in here. So it's quickly to see on the appointment card, which one is a real address and which one is a GPS location. Uh, some other changes to, or some other improvements and whatnot to Android, we've improved the barcode scanner so it's less sensitive and we redesigned it to have an actual box around it. So you just focus in on your serial number, whatever you need to read. Uh, and it, it has a little delay to it. So it's not scanning instantly as soon as you come over some UPC symbol. Uh, we improved dark mode for filters. Um, we have fixed an issue with duplicate attachments. If a ticket was unpublished or published, it would then duplicate attachments that no longer the case. Uh, we fixed issues with map clustering for tickets less than three tickets near each other. It wasn't grouping up on the map. They now group up where you can click on it and see the individual appointments nicely without any kind of issues. Uh, we improved the My Day pausing for iOS. Um, when you start your workday, it starts counting your workday. And when you press pause before, uh, there was no actual physical counter counting up showing you that it's counting. Now that's been fixed. So when you hit pause, it starts counting. And when you hit resume, it goes back to the work start. And when you hit pause again, it starts counting and pause again. And finally, uh, for FMA iOS, we fixed 
many issues with hyperlinks not working when expected. So no longer we have any issues with hyperlinks using your iOS FMA app. All right. Thank you, everybody.